I simply cannot get enough of the World Cup which is taking place in Baku and I would like to show you another amazing game played in the second round between Grandmasters Lagarde from France and from India Pragnananda and I can tell you this is perhaps the game of the tournament so let's have a look what happened here this is something you almost never see in a Grandmaster game so Let's have a look. Lagarde with the white pieces plays the move e4 and it starts off with a quiet opening with the Rue Lopez, the Spanish variation. And after this move, bishop b5, Prague played here the move knight g e7. Strange looking move. You're blocking your bishop, but the knight is protecting the knight. And after the move knight c3, the knight is actually on its way to g6. So it takes two moves to develop this piece, but it's doing pretty well on g6, defending the pawn on, uh, on e5 and it leads to a different kind of dynamics when the knight is on its normal square f6 and well let's see what happens there white opens the center with the move d4 and this is still pretty mainstream theory we get to see both sides are capturing twice on d4 and after this series of exchanges black plays the move c6 attacking the bishop now the bishop can go back to maybe a4 or c4, but then it comes under threat of b5. Not sure you would really, really like to provoke that move. So instead the bishop goes to e2, queen b6, offering the exchange of queens. And now if white would take, queen takes b6, a takes b6, I think black is absolutely fine. And for a mini match, that's a perfect scenario for the black player. Uh, black is doing more than fine. This double pawn is not a weakness. In fact, the rook has a nice half open file to work with. So White, also true, true to his style, plays in a more ambitious way by keeping queens on the board. Queen to d3, bishop e7. And now the normal move here is simply to follow the golden rules by castling kingside and get your bishop out, connect the rooks. That's what you would like to do. But Lagarde thinks differently. He is looking for a lot of energetic play here with the move f4 trying to prove that this knight on g6 is badly placed and who knows maybe at the right moment the move f4 f5 can be played there followed castling kingside so black's king is already quite safe but if you would play here f5 the knight will come back to its ideal square on e5 and later on it can be supported by other pieces and white no longer will have a pawn to kick the knight out from that central post so there are different ways of playing maybe you can Get your bishop to d2 or to e3 but then you've got to figure out is black able to take that pawn on b2 never take on b2 even if it's a good move it's the well-known chess phrase but there followed the move h4 this is absolutely insane kind of stuff because this pawn is on its way to h5 but it can be captured in two different ways if you would take with the bishop with check there can follow g3 and the bishop will have to go back and i think White will play b3, intending bishop b2, castling queenside. And you're not happy as black that the h file has been opened because later on, white will develop serious play uh, via, that, uh, via that half open file. The alternative is to take with the knight, but then the queen comes to g3, intending to take on h4, getting two minor pieces for the rook. If you go knight g6 back, then f5 is there. And look at this queen, it's controlling the e5 square, which means that... The knight will have to go back and this goes from bad to worse. Queen h3, threatening mate. If you protect the mate with h6, you take on h6, g takes, queen takes, boom. This is one of the lines Lagarde was definitely calculating. Didn't happen, of course, because an experienced player will never capture such a pawn opening the files for the uh, white major pieces. And instead, the key move here for black, played by Prague, is to meet and attack on the flank with a strike in the center, opening up the position with the move d5, so that ever e takes d5, only then bishop takes h4 will be played. And then white may even regret having still its king in the center, moves like rook e8 and bishop g4 can be played soon. The other rook will come to the d file. This is the main idea behind uh, playing that pawn move to, uh, to d5. If you would advance the pawn to e5, trying to keep the files closed, there will follow f6 and very soon white center is gonna collapse as we are going to take on, um, on e5. Files will be opened and that's good news for black. So white 
had a different idea, played here the move h5, attacking the knight, and uh, instead of moving the knight somewhere, d takes e4, capturing the pawn, attacking the queen. If you would take with the queen, there is bishop h4 with check, and now you cannot really hide with your king on f1 because of queen f2, it's checkmate, while of course you, you should go to the d file, but that's not going to be great fun uh, either, because very soon other pieces will come over. The center is open, that's bad news for, for white. If you would take with a knight on e4, there is knight h4, and the knight is uh, intending to take on uh, g2, for instance, but also it can safely come back to f5, and black consolidates its position, black's position is more than fine. So, Lagarde played here the move queen to g3. Looks very dangerous because he is not capturing the pawn, but he's threatening to take on g6 with the pawn. And the knight doesn't have many great squares to go to, you may think. But there follows knight to h4. Interesting move. So the knight is on its way to, uh, to f5. And then everything is looking great. White's king is still in the center. Rook takes h4. So if you take with the bishop, it's queen takes, and then all of a sudden we have a position with two minor pieces against the rook. That's not bad for white at all, but after this capture, it's queen to g1 with check. What is the king gonna do? You want to block with the bishop on f1, and now if bishop takes h4, it's queen takes h4, and um, there's not much you can do here as... Um, as black as on the next move, knight e2 will be played and white untangles. There are no threats against the white king. But remember what, what's happening here. We have just sacrificed our knight on h4. White has captured it with the rook. If you don't take on h4, what else can you do? Well, Prague has this solution. Look, he played a move e3. This is absolutely insane. Absolutely insane move. But you're advancing the pawn and try to Prove that the king is a serious problem here. If you would take with the queen this pawn, the bishop can take the rook. So the queen cannot leave that square. But if you would recapture in the other way with the bishop, there's bishop takes h4 and there's no time to take the queen on g1 because of bishop takes g3. Black is an exchange up. While in case of queen takes h4, it's queen takes e3. And also here white is an exchange down. So the pawn on e3 cannot be taken. What is the advantage having the pawn there? Well, look, this bishop cannot be developed, cannot be developed to e3, which means white has serious coordination problems. Another big threat here is, for instance, shown after white plays here the move h6, intending to deliver checkmate. This is a serious moment, guys. But you have the move queen f2 check, forcing the exchange of queens, capturing back with, with a check. King takes and his bishop takes h4. The rook remains hanging. Now we understand the move e3. White's position is paralyzed. Queen f2 is a big threat. And the only move to prevent queen f2, it's the move knight d1. But this is a very sad move to play. Black, once again, can take the rook on h4. It's not interested in it. He continues playing here with a piece down. Play the move rook e8. So that if the pawn on e3 will be captured at some point, the file will be opened and white's king will be in big trouble. For instance, if you take the pawn now, bishop takes h4. Of course, the queen cannot be taken because of the pin. If you go queen takes h4, it's rook takes e3, knight takes e3, queen takes e3 with a massive attack. The bishop will be released soon. The rook will come into play. This is game over. So the pawn on e3 cannot be taken. White played instead the move king e2. But this is also not looking much fun, uh, guys. You're, what you're going to do with your king? Well, maybe the idea is to take on e3 very soon. Bishop e6 on the board with the plan of bringing the bishop to c4 with check. King is in trouble, after which the bishop is in trouble as well. What should Y do? Apparently, according to the machine, the best move here to deal with the threat of bishop c4 is not playing b3, which was Lagarde's move, but instead f5. Bizarre idea so that the rook covers the c4 square. You're attacking the bishop. Now it's time to take the rook. And after queen takes, rather than taking the pawn, the machine says bishop d5, planning to take on g2. It's two minor pieces versus a rook. But look at white's king. 
It's looking terrible. White species there are not doing great. Black is much better. In the game there followed B3, and this is the human continuation, but then the remaining piece joins the action. The rook comes to the D file. And there are a lot of problems. For instance, now bishop b2, developing your bishop is not possible, runs into a rook d2 check, and you don't want to see how this is gonna end. After king to e1, only move, it's time to take on h4. White is gonna take back. And here, beautiful move, bishop g4, guys, intending to deliver checkmate with the rook on e2 because the bishop on f1 is pinned. You have to take the bishop, and now it's rook takes d1. It's absolutely stunning. King takes d1, it's queen takes f1 with checkmate, while after rook takes d1, we have the mating idea of queen f2. And now we understand the idea of this move, bishop g4. We were trying to deflect the white queen from covering the f2 square. So instead of playing this move, um, bishop b2, bishop takes e3, can be considered as well, was not played. Show you quickly what happens in that case. Very similar idea, you take first the rook, then you give a check with the bishop to clear the e-file for your rook. Queen takes g4, rook takes g1, boom, game over. Bishop is pinned, no time to capture the queen. After rook takes d1, it's queen takes e3, checkmate. If you take with the king, it's queen takes f1, king d2. You can already take the rook in the corner, even more precise is to give another check to frustrate your opponent. And after king c3, queen takes a1, you're an exchange up with a mating attack, which is still in progress. All these lines are tactically favoring black. Therefore, knight takes e3 was played, but there's bishop f6. Now you're hitting the rook in the corner, rook to b1. And now another similar idea. We are not taking the rook. We are not interested at all. We play bishop f5. So the knight is pinned and look at the energy which has been exerted by all blacks pieces. White's position is paralyzed. If you would play a developing move like bishop d2, it's just capture on h4, queen recaptures, bishop g4 check, knight cannot capture, you have to take with the queen. And then it's eliminating the defender one more time. King takes d2, queen takes e3, king d1, and it's checkmate on e1. For us, difficult lines to calculate. For Prague, this is peanuts. White played here the move queen f2, very understandable. You would love to get rid of the most dangerous piece in black's position, the black queen. But the next move, guys, ooh la la, look at this. Bishop takes h4, the queen is ignored because if you do capture the queen here, it's bishop to g4 with a check, the knight is pinned, the king can't go to any of these squares, it's all covered by the rooks and the bishops, it's a beautiful checkmate. Absolutely amazing. Therefore, the queen cannot be taken. Now, why decided to take, for that reason, back on h4? But there's bishop takes c2. It's absolutely hopeless. The rook is hanging. If you move the rook, it's bishop d3 check. King got a move, and then we take on f1. Black is material up with a mating attack still going on. If you offer the exchange of queens, you do accept it, and then you have an endgame being two exchanges down. That's hopeless. White's position is terrible. White got desperate. Played the most practical continuation by returning the material, sacrificing its queen so that after rook takes d8, knight takes c2, at least you do have three pieces for the queen. But how to evaluate a position with three minor pieces against the queen? Some positions favoring the minor pieces obviously but it all depends on the coordination do they have stable outposts are they receiving the support from their pawns is your king safe well that's what matters here this king is still in trouble queen c5 attacking the knight keeping white busy knight e3 trying to close the e-file but rook e8 pinning the knight very typical move if you would play bishop d2 trying to consolidate there's rook takes e3, typical tactical shot, so that after white recaptures, there is queen c2, and you pick up the rook, it's game over. Therefore, rook takes e3 is a huge threat. King went to f3. King e2, uh, sorry, queen d4 was played. And if you understand what the idea is, 
you're trying to dominate white's pieces. Um, which means that rook b2 runs into rook takes e3. Rook takes, queen takes b2. So that is not possible. King e2 was played. Queen c5 back. That's one repetition, but we are not in a rush. Queen takes h5. We are eating one more pawn. White goes g4. Queen h1 check. No time to get the other pieces involved. If you would block with your bishop, natural move again. Another huge tactic. Rook takes e3. If you do take with a bishop, it's queen takes b1. If you do recapture with a king, it's queen takes g2. Queen versus rook and bishop, it's game over. Bishop g2, not possible for that reason. King to g3. And now there are no immediate threats, but we can strengthen our position with rook e6. Excellent move. So that after white finally releases its bishop from its initial square, bishop d2, the plan is to go h5 to remove the g-pawn. If white would try to keep the position closed, with the move g5, there will follow h4 with check. King f2, queen h2. If you block with a knight, it's h3. So the h-pawn is another huge asset. Moving away with the king, runs into queen takes f4 with the idea to take on e3 or bring up the h-pawn very soon. It's impossible to handle the situation as white. So white decided to take with a pawn on h5. After queen takes h5, White's king gets more vulnerable. The g-pawn is seriously missed. Rook e1, rook g6, king f2, queen h4. So you're about to uh, to take on uh, on f4. If king e2 or queen takes f4, I mean, there's no constructive plan here for white. So white tried to stick to its extra pawn, but it runs into queen to g3. White protects it with king to e4. And now rook d6 attacking the bishop, while the bishop also got to retain control over the rook. If bishop c3, the idea is to go rook e6, king d3 and take another pawn. I mean, this is very, very bad. Black has already a queen and three pawns for these three minor pieces. Black is much better here. In the game that followed rook e2, white tried to protect the bishop and move the rook away from the threat. But now... Look at this idea. There follow this move. Another powerful pawn check. What should you do here? Well, if you take with a knight, it's queen d3 check. King e5 and queen d5 is checkmate. In case of king takes f5, well, the queen attacks the king from the other side. Queen g6 check. King e5, queen e6 is another beautiful mating pattern of queen and rook. The last option for white is king e5, but there's queen g6, and there's nothing you can do against the threat of queen e6. Knight takes f5, queen e6, so in the position after this move, f5, white resigned. I cannot recall such a strong grandmaster with the white pieces, 2600, getting crushed in fascinating style by Pragnananda. I think this is, for me, the game of the tournament so far, and I hope you liked it. Like the video and give it a like, of course, and subscribe to the channel because we are getting to see much more interesting games with the tension growing. The stakes are high. Let's see what the future games will bring us. See you soon back on the channel.